Good morning. This is Elizabeth Beslow for ANN in Austin, Texas, January 15, 1863. In searching for the religious and ethnic groups who declared opposition to slavery, slaveholders, and the expansion of slavery into the Western territories, we are under the impression that only Quakers as an immigrant group were opposed to slavery. But we discovered that most German immigrants from the very beginning um, were absolutely against keeping slaves. The executive director of the German Chamber of Commerce is here to tell us about this new fact. Please welcome Ms. Anya J. Heller. Thank you for having me. Fräulein Heller, can I call you Anya? Oh, of course. Uh, um, well, we would all like to know is how big a part the German people did play in the opposition that the institution of slavery in this country. Uh, Ms. Besto, I, I think I can speak for the Germans in Austin and probably in Texas as well. We are all against slavery here in Austin and its expansion into any U.S. territories. That's nice um, and very patriotic that you feel that strongly. Um, did you have anything to write? Oh yes, uh, some German journalists put down a solid platform in 1854. I have it right here, I'll translate it as I go. Slavery is an evil, the removal of which is absolutely necessary according to the principles of democracy. And if the state determines the removal of this evil, it may call on the federal government for aid. The journals heralded a meeting, hoping to get all the Germans together for this cause. Wow, I am very impressed. Um, are there any more leaders like that in Texas? Yes, academic circles headed by Germans were also organized. Um, the head of the San Antonio paper, Zeitung, Dr. Duai, published anti-slavery editorials and it excited the zeal of the pro-confederate populace that he had to flee to Boston. I'll also say that even though we are not winning over the confederacy, it's going to be very easy to reconcile with the Union afterwards. I see. So, now I have a big question. Why do you think the German Americans developed such strong anti-slavery views? And what was the origin? Well, it goes back to 1830s Germany. Um, overpopulation and too many German states headed by kings or princes. And the Germans had this feeling of wanderlust. They wanted to get out, but Prussia and Bavaria were opposed to emigration. And after a failed revolution in 1848, they came here. Um, the thing is they realized that they'd have to associate with um, the, the traditions of the South and notice that, um, that slavery and democracy were in direct conflict with each other. Huh, very good. So the only alternative would be the more logical northern thinking? Yes, um, whenever the Republican Party chose Lincoln as a candidate, the Germans <laughs> were so excited. Uh, and uh, I think that the main supporters were in Missouri and they were all Germans. Uh, so then they supported Lincoln because of what reason? Oh, well, the Germans uh, were against slavery. Germans abhorred slavery. And in 173 years before the Civil War, Germans marched protesting it. And I will say uh, is that it, it wasn't the Italians or the French or the English or the Irish that protested, only the Germans. All right, Anya, was President Lincoln aware of the support you were giving him and did he mention it at any time? Yes, but no public statement. Um, he knew that uh, Karl Schutz was also a huge supporter. He's one of our German generals. And Karl Schutz had said that um, if Lincoln becomes president, he will be down in the history books for all time, um, up there with Washington. And I agree with that, but as long as he frees the slaves. Anya, I have to admire the German-Americans' resolve to end slavery, especially by the various clubs in San Antonio, and with the goal to make Texas a civilized country. We all hope that slavery really ends with the Civil War and does not continue in some other form afterward. This is Elizabeth Beslow for the Abolition News Network saying to our American and German listeners, Guten Tag.